Hello Retro Gamers, I'm Brendan from Retro Game On and welcome to another episode of Retro News Fortnightly! Yes, where I give you all the news in the retro gaming world every 14 days. On to the news! So before we start our next news segment, I just want to give you a bit of backstory just so we're all on the same level. Uh, basically, the Nintendo 64 DD was an add-on only, only released in Japan for the Nintendo 64 that allowed these floppy drive disk things to plug in and it could also connect to the internet. Uh, this was never released in America though, unfortunately, because it was a huge flop in Japan. I won't go into too much detail about the 64 DD. Maybe that can be a uh, Wonders of the Retro Gaming World episode for another day. Uh, but basically, because it never was released in America, um, retail-ready prototypes or just retail-ready versions have never been found. Prototypes have, but retail-ready versions not. This was all until about, I guess it was last week now, where fellow YouTuber Metal Jesus from the excellent YouTube channel Metal Jesus Rocks basically found one on Craigslist. So, understandably, this is big news. Nothing like this has ever been found before. As far as we know, it's one of a kind. Interestingly enough, it also came with a blue development disc. Now, unfortunately, uh, Metal Jesus has not been able to, to get this to work yet, but he has been in contact with a man named Mark Delora, who basically worked with Nintendo in the 1990s, and he was uh, head of Nintendo's division. I don't know, I don't know what he did. Uh, but basically, he actually talked on the phone with Metal Jesus and confirmed that, yes, this is a legit thing, and that development cartridge is real. And apparently you need something called a N64 partner cartridge to get it to work, which Metal Jesus currently does not have. So Metal Jesus, being the re resourceful guy he is, and being the big YouTuber he is, no doubt will have no trouble finding one of these N64 partner cartridges. So I think it will be well worth to check his channel and look for any updates. And I highly recommend watching his video on it. It's fascinating and I honestly my personally I can't wait to see more on this because I really want to know what's on that development disc I mean at this stage it could be anything it could be it could be blank it could be broken it could be an unreleased game it could be a demo it could even just be one of those things you that you saw back in the mall in the 1990s was just playing demo videos on loop could be anything but very interesting and I will personally be keeping an eye on the story on to another story now that involves another YouTuber, funnily enough. Uh, this one is about Ben Heck, or Ben Heckendorn, who is an amazing guy. Never met him myself, but you can just tell he's awesome. Uh, basically, he's very big into retro gaming, but also electronics, which are two things I'm also very much into. Um, and he basically got his hands on that SNES CD, which I was talking about last week. Oh, sorry, two weeks ago, because this is Retro News Fortnightly. Uh, but anyway, um, basically, uh, the SNES CD, just in case you didn't watch the video, was a foul adventure between Nintendo and Sony to be an add-on for, uh, for the SNES, kind of like the Sega CD to allow disc uh, base games to work. The story I talked about last week was that some indie dev uh, made a game for it. So I highly recommend you check out uh, the last episode if you want to find out more about that. But anyway, and, oh, and also, side note, I said it was found in some dude's garage. It was actually found in some dude's attic. So just clean the air. Uh, but basically, um, it wasn't in perfect working order. So uh, Ben Heck has released two videos. In the first one, he basically tears it down and fully documents it because obviously there's no documentation about it on the internet because it's a one of a kind prototype. And in the second video, he actually repairs it. So I highly recommend you check out the videos, but just to basically summarize it, uh, to no one's surprise, well, no one's surprise who have ever repaired any console or basically a lot of electronics, it had bad capacitors, which is a very common problem. So just a quick note, if you're ever trying to fix a console and you can't figure out the problem, check the caps. But anyway, that's completely off topic. Interestingly enough, that wasn't the only problem. The disk drive wasn't working, and he basically figured out that a jumper wire that had been added to the motherboard seemed to be stopping the CD drive from functioning. So there's a theory that it may have been intentionally tampered with to not work, because maybe someone wanted to take it home when it was failed. So basically they bricked it, so you know, whatever reason. But very, I mean, this, this is not known for sure, but very interesting if that is in fact the case. So he does have two videos, and I will link them in the description along with the rest of the sources of all the other news stories, by the way. Um, and they both are fairly long, both are over 20 minutes, but you won't notice the time going by when you watch them. Ben Heck is an amazing presenter. He 
I mean, I'm not going to go on a little, uh, just like a little fan fest saying how much I love Ben Heck, but this guy is awesome. And if you're interested in this SNES CD prototype, I highly recommend you watch it because he goes into pretty decent technical detail about the, the ICs in the SNES and how it's all put together. And he found a lot of Sony chips in there, of course. He even realized that the power adapter to power it up is exactly the same as the one used on the PS1 Slim. So, all very interesting. And then the second video where it's basically a log of him trying to fix it, kind of like what I did with my NES a couple of months ago, but he did it way better. So yeah, I highly recommend you watch it. Links are in the description. So for our last story of the day, we have the fantastic news that the Super Mario Bros. speedrun record has been broken. Uh, this was by a chap from Japan called uh, Hup Chapter. But the difference being that this guy was blindfolded the entire time. Like he could not see what he was doing, yet he broke the record. So yeah, I'm not sure if this is the record for like Super Mario Bros. speedrun completely or if it's just the record for doing it blindfolded. But either way, it's very impressive. So for those wondering about numbers, his record was 17 minutes and 46 seconds, which is, I mean, that's an amazing speedrun record of the game anyway, I guess, but th this guy literally could not see a thing. I must stress that. Um, he absolutely thrashed the previous record of doing this, which is 23 minutes and 14 seconds. So yeah, did, did I know that this was a thing? No, I did not. I do remember seeing a video a couple of years ago, or maybe it was last year, where a, a guy who was actually blind uh, speed run um, Abe's Odyssey. But there's a lot of sound. I mean, that's very impressive, but there is a lot of different sounds going on in that game. I don't know if you've ever played it. You probably have, but you'll know what I mean. But Super Mario Bros, it's, it's an 8-bit game. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, watch his video. Um, I know I'm just linking YouTube videos all over the place today, but the like the others, the link can be found in the description. And it is well worth a watch. Like, I watched the entire thing, like the whole 17 minutes plus bits before and after. So it's over, another video that's over 20 minutes, but it's just amazing how good this guy's memory is. Like, I can't even remember what I had for dinner last night. Except I do, because it was chicken chow man, and it was awesome. And I also had it for dinner tonight, and I also had it for lunch today. Uh. So with that, that brings another episode of Retro News Fortnightly to a close. Uh, tell me what you think of the news stories. Tell me your opinions. Also, tell me what you had for dinner last night, because why not? Um, like I've said several times in the video, all my sources can be found in the description if you want to know more. Um, so yeah, that's it. If you look to my left, you'll see the last two Retro News Fortnightlies. Uh, just be warned that only the top one is actually from a fortnight ago. The one before that is from November last year, because I only just started making these videos again. Um, to my right, you'll see the last two videos I've done. Uh, one's a review, one's a new series I've just started called uh, Wonders of the Retro Gaming World, where I look at the Satella view, which was an add-on for the Super Famicom in Japan that basically allowed it to connect to satellites so games could be downloaded. I won't go into it now. I highly recommend you watch that video if that sort of thing interests you. But yeah, that's it. I shall see you in a fortnight and we'll go through some more news. Goodbye.